All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for your patient uh, kind of working through a little of the tech end of uh, the worship. Um, I'll open in prayer, and then uh, Verena's going to bless us with a, a song. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day and for uh, drawing your people together. Lord, uh, as we continue to go through your word and, and understand the gifts that you've given your people and the manner in which we're to use them, Lord, we pray for open minds and open hearts. Lord, that your word, the truth of your word alone, uh, penetrates deep into us and, uh, and changes us. In Jesus' name.
much. All right. Well, please uh, open your Bible to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know, sometimes I think uh, we forget that uh, this was a, a letter as a whole written to uh, the church body at, in Corinth. Uh, it's just so rich in meaning, and, and we look to examine it and apply it, that we just kind of break it up into little bits. And um, it was a letter. I mean, when you're, you're writing a letter, or you're receiving a letter, kind of read it as a whole. There's a flow to it. There's a there's a purpose and, and bits, you know, that are here in the beginning applying to, you know, the thought process going through it. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, uh, when you get to the reading assignment, maybe back up a little bit or, or read ahead. Uh, there's no harm with that to, uh, to understand the context of uh, the section as a whole. So we'll just kind of back up just, just a little bit. Um, remember, he uh, Paul spent like a year and a half in Corinth, and uh, so they had solid doctrine teaching. You know, we can only imagine, um, you know, the power and the truth of of um, Paul's leading that that church body, and uh, over the past uh, chapters, uh, we've seen that. Uh, there's been, again, a carnal kind of um, feeling going along in the church body as far as, you know, the, Paul originally said, you know, when I was with you, I couldn't, I couldn't speak to you about uh, deep spiritual matters. I, you know, I shared uh, milk with you and, and you weren't ready for the deeper things. And, and as he's moving through this, now he says, now it's, you know, it's time to talk about spiritual. And he started talking about the gifts but again, how they were um, grabbing the, the gifts and, and using them for their own benefit, for maybe some esteem or uh, looking at a position um, within the church. And uh, they were definitely focused on um, the speaking gifts, so the gifts of tongue, the gift of prophecy, that kind of thing. And so now rolling right in at the end of uh, chapter 12, um, he says, and I will show you a still more excellent way. And so it's like, let, let's hold on for a second here and let me show you something better than these gifts, um, something that's, that's being missed. Um, and then starting in chapter 13, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Again, it's kind of funny that uh, immediately he starts off talking about the gift of tongues. You know, it, 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 was, a, it was an issue that uh, this church focused on. And, um, you know, reading some commentaries, they'll even say that the area that they were in, the, the pagan temples that were going on, it wasn't uncommon for, you know, this kind of babble to go along with their worship. And so... It was something in the culture that they were used to. And uh, so they had a different view um, of this tongues and, and there was no kind of inhibition about, you know, jumping and, and grabbing and trying to display that. Um, talks about noisy gong or clanging cymbal. Um, I was born and raised in Kenosha, a very strong band community. Um, and so in like fifth or sixth grade, um, people would roll in and they'd set up uh, all these instruments in a, you know, a classroom area and have kids come through with their parents and uh, um, so kids excited and, and choosing instruments and uh, um, then they would match you up with a, a teacher, usually would be maybe a, a college student that was going through, you know, trying to get a musical degree. So there was no like band in our great schools. So you spent time with your, your teacher once a week, you know, you'd be practicing. And then like six months later, they, they had this citywide uh, bandorama is what they would call it. And so there was a university 
Um, they would have the whole gymnasium was just filled with uh, folding chairs and kids. So from the beginners and then the different, you know, uh, intermediate and then high school and some orchestras and it was like a three hour event. But it always started with the beginners. And these beginners really only came together and played as a band for like three times. So they were all by themselves, you know, sitting with their little, uh, you know, lesson book, you know, learning how to play some uh, notes and that kind of thing. And, and so they call you together and now there's this poor instructor trying to like her and get all these kids to play together who, who've never played together and new clarinet players. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. I mean, it is it's just wild, the, the noises that come out of there. They lose control, you know, they're, they're trying. Um, but it, it sounds like, you know, the brakes on a, a train, you know, just screaming. And that's what came to mind when, you know, the sound of, uh, of tongues um, without love is just, is just annoying noise. Uh, verse 2, and I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. The know all mysteries, knowledge and faith. You know, uh, even the, the church body now, the, the Gentiles and the, the nation of Israel, that was a mystery back then. And, and we're able to look at the word and say, you know, it's obvious, you know, through the Old Testament, it talks about, you know, the coming together and becoming one. But as far as Israel was concerned, they were a chosen nation. Um, and they were a nation of priests and they were, you know, it was unthinkable for them to think that they were coming together. Well, that was a mystery back then. And it's not a mystery for us. But you know, there's still mysteries now um, that uh, you can grapple with, you can try. Um, God's election, man's free will. You know, it's talked about how, how do you put that together? If we have a sovereign God who has chosen his people, you know, from the creation, from the beginning of time, and yet man has free will, he has a responsibility and accountability, how do those two things come together? And it's, it's a mystery. And uh, I would encourage you not to spend too much time trying to figure it out. Just believe it because God said it. And uh, the, there'll come a day when we will understand. Um, but they're talking about knowing all mysteries, all knowledge, gift of prophecy, have all faith. All faith, um, again, uh, our Lord said, you know, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you'd be able to say to that mountain, you know, move. Well, this talks about all faith. And, and actually the, um, the, you know, the, uh, the structure of this, I mean, the homeschool parents or maybe there's some, you know, English teachers in here. The word remove is not just a one-time deal. It's a continuous action. So you have the ability to remove the mount, keep removing, keep removing. It, 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 all you have that power. It says, I have nothing if it's done without love. I think as far as the world would be concerned, if we came across somebody who had the gift of prophecy, all knowledge, um, understood the mysteries, that'd be quite a teacher to sit under. God's word said it's nothing. Verse 3, And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but do not have love, and profits me nothing. Give all my possessions to uh, feed the poor. What calls to mind is the, the rich young ruler who approached you know, Jesus and says, you know, um, what, what must I do you know, to have uh, eternal life? And uh, our Lord tells him, he gives him commandments, you know, follow this and this and this. And he says, I've done all these, you know, since my youth. You know, what else is it? And he says, give all your, your goods to the poor and come and follow me. And he left sad. 
he, he did not do that. Um, here's somebody who did that. Gave all possessions to the poor. Delivered my body to be burned. Actually talks about martyrdom here. I, I'm, I'm giving myself to be sacrificed, to be burned. But not having love, it profits me nothing. So, uh, it, again, the, the whole martyrdom um, thing calls to mind um, our Lord's description of separating the sheep from the goats. You know, he said, uh, sheep on the right, you know, come, come you know, and uh, come to a place my Father has prepared for you. You know, you fed me when I was hungry. You gave me clothing when I was uh, cold, you gave me a, a cup of water when I was thirsty, and uh, they said, Lord, you know, when did we do these things? And he said, when you did it to the least, you know, all mine, you did it to me. And to the goats, he said, you know, depart from me. And you didn't do this, you didn't feed, you didn't. And they said, Lord, when, you know, when did we not do that? Well, you didn't do it to the least of me. We kind of understand that in our, our, you know, Western you know, mindset as Americans, while well, there's, you know, action that takes place in there. This, you did, you know, you did good to people in need. Well, yeah, he's rewarding you. You didn't, yeah, there's a consequence for that. But I'll tell you something that's even more uh, sobering is, uh, I'll, I'll turn to it, Matthew 7, uh, starting in verse 21. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. works done without a relationship. Our, our Lord said, I don't know you. And yet they had the ability to say, we did these things in your name. And he says, I don't know you. Get away from my presence. So, these are all things that are done without love. Now rolling into verse 4. This is a description of what love looks like, what it is, what it's not. So love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag, is not arrogant. We probably don't need to explain any of those. It's clear as far as uh, you know what describing love is like. Um, verse five does not act unbecoming. So that would be something that you know. Say you're trying to reach reach the lost and they're behaving in an activity that is ungodly, you would not participate in that same activity to win them over, to build a relationship, to direct them to Christ. So it does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, uh, meaning it, it doesn't seek its own will. Um, it's not provoked. Um, maybe yours is, is not easily provoked, but, uh, you know, the Greek is, it's not provoked at all. Um, does not take into account uh, wrong suffered, so it's not, you know, I've taken it, I've taken it, I've taken it, and I'm done taking it, you know. No, it's, there's a continuous, and they, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, call to mind, you know, Peter saying, Lord, how, how many times must I forgive somebody? Seven times? And the Lord said, no, uh, seven times, 70. Uh, again, not to give them a number, but to, you know, to understand that it's not taken into account. There's not a list, you know, uh, tallying that goes on. Verse 6, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, uh, but rejoices with the truth. Um, so it, you have a, a co-worker that, uh, you know, maybe isn't so nice and, and something bad happens to them. 
you know, love is not in, yeah, he got what he had, come at me, you know. You know, maybe that'll straighten him out. You know, that's that's not an act of love. Um, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Right, I, you know, if we did a self-examination of, you know, how we how we're doing, you know, with that description of love, uh, we probably wouldn't fare well. Looking at the words that uh, are used here to describe love, you know, patient, kind, jealous, doesn't brag. Um, it called the mind for me uh, the fruit of the spirits in Galatians where it describes uh, fruit of the Spirit as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. We can see, you know, the same kind of common language between, you know, that and this verse. Love is a gift from the Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Um, it's probably nothing new um, to hear that uh, in the Greek language there's different kinds of love where um, the English language we just... We say love, but um, there's eros, um, which is uh, a romantic love, to put it nicely. It's a, it's a flesh love. Um, phileo, um, described as a brotherly love. Now, that doesn't mean it's a, a standoffish kind of thing, but it, it is a close uh, fellowship and then adopte love. And this is what kind of love we're talking about here. Um, the first two, eros and phileo, I can probably muster up, you know, on a good day. Um, but a fruit of the Spirit, agape, you know, is, is something that isn't done in your own strength. Um, our Lord talks about abiding in Him. Uh, I am the vine, you're the branches. Um, you know, I'm not a, a botanist, but if you went over to an uh, apple tree, and you cut off the branch and you stuck it in a, a bucket of water and even if you, you know, threw some plant food or whatever, it's not going to produce fruit. Um, with any kind of luck, you might keep it, you know, kind of alive looking and green for a while, but it's away from the stock. It's away from the, the tree itself, the root, and that's what we need um, for this kind of love, is to be abiding in the Lord. Um, it's the vertical relationship that we have with our Lord um, that allows us to have this, and then the horizontal, uh, spirit-filled love can pour out um, because, first and foremost, we have that um, relationship with our Lord. Um, again, you kind of see a pattern here. I think about other verses in the Bible um, in John, after Christ's resurrection and after he, he appeared to his um, disciples, there's a section here where it talks about uh, Peter saying, you know what, I'm going fishing. And uh, a few of the other apostles joined them. They went fishing. They went out during the night, didn't catch anything. Um, they're coming back during the morning. There's a guy on shore and calls out, hey, you know, you guys catch anything? He said, no. He said, throw your net, you know, off to the side. Uh, you know, they've been through that before. They did so, nets full. John says to Peter, it's our Lord. Peter doesn't waste any time. He puts on all his clothes, jumps in the water, and he, he doesn't even wait for the boat to get there. So he, he gets to shore. Jesus has a fire going. He has some fish going. So Jesus asks Peter some questions. But before... He told Peter to take care of his sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. What did he ask Peter? He asked him, do you love me? And we, we kind of look at that as far as it's a, you know, a, a, well, it's a reconciliation. And, and then that's a, it's a very deep scripture because, I mean, there's, there's different words for love that are going in and, and during the exchange and study that. But just even from there, before he asked him to do, 
the task that he was going to give him, the ministry, he asked him, do you love me? And that's what we need to ask ourselves. Again, you know, Peter's experience at this point, I, I don't think the world would challenge him as far as being, you know, worthy of, of being able to teach, you know, his people. But the Lord is asking him about his love, um, having the right heart. In Isaiah, uh, there's a verse that says, uh, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. God is able to discern our hearts, uh, our motives. A couple verses earlier uh, in the letter to the Corinthians, it says uh, each of uh, man's work will become evident. talks about if the Lord somehow is able to, you know, our work that we built on the foundation, was it gold, silver, you know, precious stones, or was it hay, stubble, uh, wood? And then it's tested by fire. There's another verse, 1 Corinthians 4, 5, where it talks about the Lord bringing to light the things hidden in the darkness, our motives. He is able to discern what was the reason behind our actions. Um, and all of this share, you know, maybe makes you feel a little defeated right now. Um, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to you know, sign up. I'm trying to, you know, figure out gifts and, and use it. Um, but be encouraged. Um, God does know our hearts. And if we're seeking Him, we're seeking that right relationship, that gift of love, He can take even our stumbles, our fumbles, and be able to use it for His glory and for the good. We're told uh, we are the body, you know, with different gifts. We're going through that. Um, we've also been described as stones uh, in the temple of God. In, in 1 Peter, they actually say we're living stones being built up. Well, you know, the body parts, we're described as, as a body. We're described as stones. But that, it's love that keeps us together. It's the love that's the ligaments that keeps the different body parts, you know, together, working together. And it's it's love that keeps those living stones, you know, stacked um, and keeps us from doing our own thing. Now, granted, you know, I've uh, already shared, you see a need, but you don't need to come and ask for permission. Go, pursue, you know, um, share the gospel. Um, share those gifts. But we're also commanded to, to come together. There's, there's something that uh, coming together in the love of the body that can encourage, it can discourage too. Um, it's kind of easy, you know, one of the great things to be able to say, hey, right on, you know, brother, great job, you know, I'm so happy for you. It's a little bit harder to speak and love one and another and say, you know, I heard what you said there. It didn't sound like you, you know, kind of thing. What's going on? You know, to be able to, to um, rather than thinking wrong, being polite and giving them the benefit of the doubt, to speak into somebody's life and, uh, and be able to encourage them in that way. All right, back to uh, the verses here. Love never fails, but if there are gifts of prophecy they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. It kind of makes sense, right? So when we are face to face with our Lord, there's not going to be a, a need to exhort to explain Scripture. Uh, to encourage or, you know, admonish one another. Uh, well, we're going to know all mysteries under his teaching, all knowledge at the feet of our Lord. Um, so it's understandable that those gifts wouldn't be needed. It, John, you're going to be out of work at that point in time. 
Uh, verse 11. When I was a child, I used to speak as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. And that's that's part I love of that verse is, but then I will know now what I know in part, and I will be, I shall, <laughs> but then I shall know, just as also I have been fully known. So again, our Lord fully knows us. There's, there's nothing but we don't have the, that same ability uh, here and now. Um, on earth, we are looking through, you know, a veil. We don't know all the truths. Um, can still seek, you know, hunger for, um, you know, through that relationship with our Lord. Um, but we're not going to get it right always. Um, but our desire is to strive in that direction. Sounds like I'm picking on Peter, but... Uh, Paul speaks of Peter in Galatians. Is we know Peter loves the Lord, but in this incident, um, Peter is out and he's um, he's spending time with the Gentiles. He's having meals with them. Paul's there too. A group comes from Jerusalem to check and see how things are going. So suddenly Peter changes who he's associating. He's having dinner with. Um, because the, uh, the group from Jerusalem. Paul calls them out on them. Uh, but he does it in love. And that's what our body needs to do one to another. Um, a verse in here, uh, I, I kind of, uh, talk, Paul talked about, uh, do you not know that those who run in a race, all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. You know, I always kind of thought, and then he shares in, in with Second Timothy, I've run the good race. I, you know, I've done, I fought the good fight. <coughs> Excuse me. Reflecting on this and, and Paul's concern for the body and the gifts coming together, um, do you ever run a three-legged race? You're tied. I, I kind of I look at this now that that's what it is. It, it's not Paul running way ahead, being the super saint, you know, doing that. He's he's encouraging. He's bringing all of them with him. Go back to the beginning of First Corinthians. Back to the beginning of First Corinthians. It's not all bad. I mean, as we kind of go through this, we think, what a messed up lot. And it's not that we think they're really any worse than us, but that's our focus. This is just on, oh, they didn't get this right. And kind of think he talks about them, the saints, and, then, and I pray for you, and I'm, I'm encouraged by you, and I, I thank God for you. His other letters to other churches, he's going, hey, you know what? Your love is known by the area by the community. Kind of, what can I say except keep doing it kind of thing. He's running the race with them. And so, you know, be encouraged by that. Uh, that we're going to come alongside and we're going to tie together and we're all going to be going same direction. In a three-legged race, if you're not, you're going down. So, but uh, at least you got somebody right there to help pick you up. All right, verse 13. But now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. You know, I, there's, uh, I, I got a confession to make as far as, you know, I sought forgiveness from the Lord, but, uh, you know, as we were meeting with elders and, and we're talking about uh, my gifts, and uh, we're talking about uh, the need for, you know, John to uh, be able to teach us 
how to be able to uh, to share God's word and uh, my schedule doesn't allow me to have weekends off all the time and uh, I work third shift but uh, there is still a snow guarantee that I have Sunday mornings available because I'm still available to uh, work forced overtime so I selected uh, this date based on the fact it was a Sunday that I had off and so John he's got a list of well here's how we're planning on moving through and so I was chapter 13 I'm like <laughs> the love chapter. <laughs> you know, got a plaque in your house, or maybe you got the wedding card, or whatever. And I, um, and shame on me. You know, <laughs> really shame on me for that. But, uh, you know, I even told John, well, you know, he's like, well, you could, you know, you could take another week. And, no, okay, I, I'm. The Lord will give me something to sink my teeth into, you know. But how wrong is that? <laughs> Seriously, there's nothing more that I need in my life than um, applying this, seeking this, crying out to the Lord. Um, I got no problem speaking the truth, um, but speaking the truth in love—that's a—that's been a struggle for me. Um, even preparing for this message, doing a lot of, you know, reading and, and again, you know, getting different ideas. And so I had a couple of weeks and uh, again, working third shift in the past, you know, there's some, there's some time for some quiet time to be able to read, to be able to, you know, write and put things together. And um, it didn't happen. I kept being put in a position of uh, having to relieve people, several, you know, units or, or working in a, um, an area that required a lot of hands-on patients that are very needy um, kind of deal. And it just kept going on and on and on. And it's like, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you. You're going to give me the time to be able to prepare this. But I'll tell you, I was getting to the point where I'm like, it, because I never know where I'm going until I go into work. I'm a utility, so they assign me wherever the need is. Maybe somebody called me in, so they put me in that spot. So I don't know. So as I, I get my assignment, and I'm walking back to the unit where I'm going, I'm like, are you kidding me? I, you know, I, I've been here longer than the guy who's going to go over and sit and got a nice, everybody's behaved, and, you know, kind of thing. And it was laid on my heart and my mind, oh, so you want to talk about love and service, you know, in the right way. I was doing the job in the areas. I, I was. I was taking care of, you know, their needs. And I was taking care of the needs of my coworkers and that kind of thing. But I wasn't doing it in love. I was going, I was, I was going through the motions. And it was all for nothing. Now I, you know. They got their bathroom breaks and their meal breaks and, you know, all that, but it didn't glorify God. Um, I'd like to close with, uh, again, uh, at the end of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Um, Paul says, it's verse 16, 13 through 14, uh, he says, be on the alert. It's like a wake up. Stand firm in the faith. Stand up. Act like men. Be strong. It's man up. You know, we sometimes we think about love being all, you know, gushy and 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 something that's not manly. But that's not the case. Um, when I was saved, uh, Arizona Little Southern Baptist Church, uh, Pastor he, he only had one arm. He ended up uh, losing it in, in college through an accident. He came up to me, threw, the, threw his one arm around me, and said, I love you, man. And that freaked me out. Um, it, it wasn't that it was any kind of wrong intention on his part. It's just something that I never experienced, you know, man to man. Do I know my, my parents love me? My father loved me? Absolutely. Not without a doubt. 
But again, you know, maybe you're, you've gone through life without that kind of um, experience. Maybe you've had a family that it's nothing but I love you, but, you know, kind of deal. There's nothing um, unmanly about it. There's nothing... Um, our Lord has called us to do it. It's a commandment. It's not an option. And it's to be done in the right way. Otherwise, our, our service is as nothing. So, I hope you're encouraged rather than discouraged by knowing um, that it's the strength of the Lord that you can depend on, that you can receive it, you know, that from. And uh, you're not in this alone. All right, so next week, uh, read ahead, chapter 14, verses 1 through 25. And again, I would, you know, you can back up a little bit, read, get a running start into it. You can read ahead. There's no harm in that. Um, close in prayer. I mean, we do have one little kind of announcement. Um, uh, the, the elders, uh, we went and uh, to the two sisters, uh, the building there. Um, there was uh, an invitation for us to uh, to attend our, our worship service there. Um, so we went and looked at the, the facility. Uh, we talked to the owners there, and uh, we haven't finalized it, but it looks... That looks very promising. We've been prayerful on it as far as considering it. We don't see obstacles, but again, as far as setting the date, um, stay tuned. Um, we're looking to uh, be able to move there. Okay. All right. Close us in prayer. Lord, thank you. We thank you for uh, your word. It's alive. Lord, we, we thank you that uh, you're able to uh, give us hearts of flesh. Lord, we, we read in the word that, you know, uh, take the, the stone, hearts of stone, and replace it with heart of flesh. You write your word in our hearts. Lord, let there be no escape from us turning to you, abiding in you, uh, having that relationship with you that we hunger to spend time in your word, at your feet. Um, Lord, lifting up each and every concern that we have. Lord, our desire is not to, uh, to be ignorant in this. That uh, you've called a way for your people to love one another, to be known by the world, by our love for one another and our love for them. Lord, we don't do it for our own glory or to say, oh, that's such a nice group of people. But, Lord, we, our desire is to do it, that you be glorified. Lord, uh, we only cry out that we be good and faithful servants in the task that you've given us. We love you, Lord, but our desire is to love you more and more each day. Lord, uh, knit us together as your body that... Uh, makes us peculiar to the world. In Jesus' name, amen.